Bangladesh and Qatar sign five agreements, five MOUs. Upajala polls candidates start campaign after allocation of symbols. ACC charge sheet against PK Haldar among 23 for embezzlement of Taka 103 crore. More than 300 bodies found in mass grave at Gaza Hospital, says Gaza Civil Defense. Those were the headlines. This is ATN News. Good evening, viewers. I'm Riti Prova with English Bulletin. Bangladesh and Qatar have signed five agreements and five memorandums of understanding to enhance mutual cooperation between the two countries. The agreements and MOUs were signed at PMO following bilateral talks on Tuesday morning. Earlier, a meeting took place between Qatar Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. To enhance the 50-year-long mutual cooperation, Bangladesh and Qatar signed five agreements and five MOUs on Tuesday at the Korobi Hall of Prime Minister's Office. The agreements include avoidance of double taxation, cooperation in legal field, maritime transport, promotion and protection of mutual investment and establishment of joint business council. Five MOUs include cooperation in the field of manpower, port operation, higher education and scientific research, youth and sports and diplomatic training. On his arrival at the PMO, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina welcomed the Amir at her office with flower bouquet. Later, they held an exclusive meeting. The two leaders discussed various bilateral issues including import of LNG. Amir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani and Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina held second meeting there. Ministers and high officials of both the countries were present at the time. The at the agreement signing ceremony, a road and a park in the capital Dhaka were named after Qatar Amir, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. The park is being built at Balurmat area in Kalshi of Mirpur. Thank you very much, From the PMO, Qatar Amir went to Bangabhavan directly. President Mohammed Shahabuddin received him and hosted a courtesy lunch in the honor of Qatar Amir. Qatar Amir, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani left Dhaka on conclusion of two-day official visit in Bangladesh. The Amir arrived Dhaka on Monday. Sheikh Salam, Desk Report, ATN News. Conspiracy from abroad is underway in a bid to oust an elected government. Ruling Awami League General Secretary Obadul Qadir made the comment. The ruling party leader came up with the allegation while distributing party leaflet and addressing a joint meeting on Bongobundu Avenue in the capital Dhaka on Tuesday. He said, conspiracy from abroad is underway for a long time. It is still going on. Even after the latest parliamentary polls was transparent and the turnout of voters was satisfactory. The Awami League General Secretary made a call for all to be united to resist the ill force engaged against democracy, peace and polls. Making a call to exercise voting rights in the Upujala elections, he said, Awami League observes people are the source of all power. Symbols have been allocated to the candidates of the first phase Upujala polls. Soon after getting symbols, the candidates have started campaign. The allocation of symbols started at the respective district election offices since Tuesday morning. To get the symbols, the candidates and their supporters expressed joy and brought out procession. Many candidates started campaign along with their supporters and followers. A total of 1,693 candidates are contesting in the first phase Upojila polls. Among them, 601 candidates are contesting for chairman posts, 645 for vice chairman and 447 for women vice chairman posts. The balloting of the first phase polls is to take place on May 8.
The Election Commission EC has decided to postpone the Upajala Purishod elections in Thanchi, Roma and Ruangchari of Bandarban district. Election Commission Secretary Jahangir Alam said the decision has been taken due to ongoing joint law enforcement operations in the areas. He disclosed this after an inter-ministerial meeting on law and order centering the Upujala polls. Chief Election Commissioner Kazi Habibul Awal chaired the meeting held at the Nirbachan Bhavan in capital's Agargao on Tuesday. Jahangir Alam said additional number of law enforcers will be deployed during the Upujala polls. Directives have been given to work all the concerned officials in a coordinated way, including the administration related with the law enforcing agencies, Alum added. The Anti-Corruption Commission ACC has found evidence against Proshanto Kumar Haldar, alias PK Haldar, of embezzlement of Taka 103 crore. The ACC is going to submit charge sheet against P.K. Haldar among 23 in this case. Gulshan Anwar, a deputy director of the ACC, filed these cases regarding the matter. In an investigation into one of these cases, two years ago, it has been seen that Amitabh Adhikari, MD of the non-existent company Anand Chemical, applied to Rashidul Islam, managing director of international leasing, for a loan of Taka 29 crore in 2015. Loans are sanctioned within 11 days without any verification. After that, Taka 63 crore for 41 lakh was withdrawn from international leasing in the name of Anand Chemical, which stood at Taka 103 crore 16 lakh 70 thousand including interest till 16 August of 2022. According to the investigation report of ACC, PK Halder and his associates embezzled and smuggled money in the name of Anand Chemical. A mass grave with more than 300 bodies has been uncovered outside the Nasser Medical Complex in southern Gaza's Khan Yunis city, following Israeli forces' withdrawal from the area earlier this month. Gaza's Khan Yunis Civil Defense reported this. Khan Yunis Civil Defense Director Colonel Yemen Abu Suleiman alleged some of the bodies had been found with hands and field tied, and there were signs of field executions. They do not know if they were buried alive or executed, as most of the bodies are decomposed. Civil Defence spokesman and search mission head Riot Sakar said they have information there are 400 missing people at the complex and they are continuing to search for rest of the bodies. Earlier, the area around the complex saw intense bombardment and combat in January to February. That time, media reported on burial of bodies in hospital grounds because of lack of safe access to cemeteries. Now a short break. We will be back soon with... U.S. portions potential threat of sanctions over Pakistan-Iran agreements. Indian women's cricket team arrives in Bangladesh to play five match T20 series. You're watching ATN News. This is English Bulletin. The 2023 country reports on human rights practices. Bangladesh has stated that extrajudicial killings in Bangladesh have decreased compared to previous years. U.S. State Department's Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor published the report early today. The report said there were no significant changes in Bangladesh human rights situation in 2023. Bangladesh's significant human rights issues included credible reports of arbitrary or unlawful killings, including extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances, torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment by the government, harsh and life-threatening prison conditions. Issues also include arbitrary arrests or detention, serious problems with judiciary independence, political detainees, 
transnational repression against individuals in another country, arbitrary or unlawful interference with privacy. Ali Akbar Khan, the ex-chairman of Bangladesh Technical Education Board, BTEB, has admitted that he himself cannot deny the responsibility of certificate forgery. He was quizzed at the DP police office on Tuesday morning. Following the questioning, Ali Akbar Khan told media that he did not get evidence of certificate forgery of system analyst ATM Shamsuz Zaman. Even he did not get information on the involvement of his wife, Sehela Parvin, in certificate forgery. Following the questioning, additional commissioner of DB police, Haruna Rashid, said Ali Akbar Khan has been given two-day time for giving explanation and then action will be taken. State Minister for Labor Affairs Nojrul Islam Choudhury has said that the USA seems not to be sincere over the reinstatement of the GSP. As a result, they are imposing various conditions frequently. At a meeting at the Secretariat on Tuesday, in reply top a query of journalists, he made the comment, Jomuna Oil Company Limited handed over the over a check of Taka 2 crore and 25 lakhs of the dividend for the Labour Welfare Foundation. The State Minister said the Labour Law will not be possible to amend the Labour Law unilaterally. The interests of both the Labours and the owners will have to be considered. Commenting that the recommendations of USA on Labour Law will be considered, the State Minister said, they will impose conditions until met their demands for the economic and commercial interests. Now news around the world. U.S. Department of State recently cautioned Pakistan citing threat of sanctions regarding potential trade agreements with Iran. U.S. Department of State spokesperson recently addressed concerns regarding potential trade agreements between Pakistan and Iran, highlighting the importance of caution due to the risk of sanctions. In response to inquiries about Pakistan-Iran trade agreements, he emphasized that U.S. is one of Pakistan's largest export markets. They have also been a leading investor in Pakistan for the past 20 years. Pakistan's economic success is in both of their interests and they look forward to continuing their partnership. However, he advised anyone considering trade deals with Iran to be aware of the potential risk of sanctions. Now, sports news. Indian women's cricket team has arrived in Sylhet to play a five-match T20 series against host Bangladesh. Harman Preet Kaur's team departed from Kolkata and reached Sylhet Osmani International Airport on a U.S. Bangla flight on Tuesday afternoon. The Indian team was welcomed with flower bouquet at the airport. The Indian women's team will be on rest at the hotel today. The two teams will face each other in this series as a preparation for the Women's T20 World Cup. The first match of the series will be held on April 28. Meanwhile, Nigar Sultana Nahida Akhtar attended a net practice for three hours at Silet International Cricket Stadium. Before ending the bulletin, the top stories once again. Bangladesh and Qatar sign five agreements, five MOUs. Upujala polls candidates start campaign after allocation of symbols. ACC charge sheet against PK Haldar among 23 for embezzlement of Dhaka 103 crore. More than 300 bodies found in mass grave at Gaza Hospital, says Gaza Civil Defense. US sanctions, potential threat of sanctions over Pakistan-Iran agreements. An Indian women's cricket team arrives in Bangladesh to play five-match T20 series. 
That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with ATN News.